the Access Analytic Toolbar, the Great 48, as we called it many years ago, is something we've been giving away to clients and training course attendees for over 10 years. It's loads of buttons that I use all the time, and they're really useful. And now, this week, we've just upgraded it to add some chat GPT buttons. So I'll tell you more right now. Let's go. So the toolbar can be enabled as an add-in, and it's a free download. I'll show you how to download it in a second. But let me just flag this, the chat GPT section, Jeff did a video on this the other day. I'll put a little link, it'll pop up now, and it's in the description below showing what all these buttons do. If you want to use those buttons, however, you need an OpenAI subscription, and you have to give OpenAI your credit card details. More about that in the notes later on. Okay, but all these buttons, they're totally free to use. You don't have to pay anybody anything. All sorts of useful things, and I'll run you through some of them right now. Okay, so let's take a look at these. The first few are just new recent files, a save as drop down, quick paste. You know, you hover over this, it gives you a little description of what you do. So nothing too special there, but new little buttons. And there's macros behind this. So you need to enable macros. Again, I'll show you the instructions in a minute. But if you've got some numbers, let's go over here, and maybe they're codes and they need to be turned to text, you can click that button and these are now text, okay? So there's that option. Format numbers, you can highlight numbers, click this if you want to have um, negatives turn into brackets. Okay, that's what that little button does. Center across, okay, if you don't want to do merge cells, which you shouldn't, click the center across button and it centers across. If you want to get the file path for this file, you can click on it and it just puts the file path in there, okay? If you want to turn this into a table, control T, uh, let me grab this here, control T as a table, okay, and go to the toolbar. You can actually say, right, let's say you're over here in a column and you want to see what's in the first three columns. Click that and it'll just tell you rather than you having to scroll up all the way across to the beginning. Okay, go to pivot source. What are these ones around about? Well, if I go table and summarize with pivot table and I'll just go into a new worksheet and I build, I don't know, customer code in the rows and sales dollars in the values. Okay, with this table, I actually want to find out where the data is coming from. Go to pivot source, jumps you to the table. Do you want to jump back? Okay, jumps you back. If you have data like this, where you've got customer name above customer code and you want it to be more like a tablet layout, then you can go Piv reformat, and that reorganizes it for you, okay? If you want to toggle between sum and count, you can click that button. If you want to format these numbers, again, with negatives and positives, with red brackets and things like that, click that button. Okay, if you've got a data validation drop down, say this one, and you want to find out where that comes from, click on go to validation, and it'll say, do you want to jump to the drop down list? There it is or you can come back to where you came from. Or if you're in a drop-down list and you want to find out where it's used, click on validation dependence and it'll actually jump you to where those validation items are and it'll keep cycling through all the use cases. Okay, um, up here I want to format anything that's missing. So I've got a next lookup going on here and I can format not zero. Okay, and as soon as I fix this one up, okay, this C04, maybe I'll change it to C3. This is now green, okay? So conditionally formatted, format not zero. Uh, if you ever happen to do a quick demo, fill random, okay, just puts random numbers in a cell. Um, well, these are the ones I highlighted as text earlier, so that's gonna work a bit weird. There we go, fill random numbers. Um, if you have something like A and then B and then one and then five, and you just wanna fill in the blanks in between, okay, you can do that, fill blanks and that'll just fill in all the blanks, which is pretty cool. Unhide all sheets, does what it says, reset notes. If you actually add a note to a cell, right click, note, new note, okay? Sometimes you'll find that these notes, you know, they end up sort of way away from where you actually set them, like over down here or way off the sheet or something like this, okay? So this button basically up here, reset notes, nudges all the sort of boxes right back to where they are, so they always hover up over here. 
uh, reset styles. If you ever go into your workbook home and go to styles here and you see thousands of different styles, your workbook may have corruption in it. Save a copy, run that button, it resets all these styles. Might take five minutes. Always do it on a copy just in case something goes wrong. It's just a macro that tidies it all up and resets the default settings. So all sorts of goodies. Um, if you've got view options, you ever get those annoying um, page break outlines on like this. So on, you see these little d ants down the side here. If you ever get those, you can just turn them off, okay, to get rid of them. And page break, grid lines, headings, all that sort of stuff. Okay, and then we've got the chat GPT stuff. So again, we can click on maybe this formula here, which has got a little X lookup in it, and ask it to explain the formula. And off it goes to ChatGPT. And again, you've got to set up an account. The request has been sent, and here's an explanation of the function. Okay, there's also optimize formula, format the formula. Um, let's see this one, format the formula. Okay, this is a horrible formula, probably a better way of well, there's definitely better ways of doing this. Um, I don't know if Optimize will actually work on that. I don't think it does, but try it out. Jeff's done a whole video on these, so check out his video. Again, you know, the little link is in the notes below. Okay, so that's what the whole toolbar does. Pretty awesome. If you're interested in how to install this, then keep watching. So this is the toolbar page. Okay, link will be in the description below, so go check that out just in case it changes. But I I doubt it will. And you just download, okay? You download the toolbar. Now it will prompt you to put in your name and your email so we can contact you. However, if you just wanna make up an email, that's fine as long as it's something.com. You know, we don't wanna spam you. We just wanna get in touch if things change, but it's totally up to you. You don't have to just put some random name in and click download. Okay, download, and you'll get a zipped file download. So I've gone into this folder, I'm going to right click, and for some reason on Windows 11, Extract All just isn't working for me. So I'm going to go to Show More Options, and using 7-zip, Extract Files. I'm going to extract it. I can just extract it here, or I could extract it to my desktop, doesn't really matter. Okay, and I go in here, open it up, open up. So here we go. And there's actually two toolbars. There's one for Excel and there's one for Word. Watch Jeff's video about what the Word buttons can do. Okay. So what do we do? Well, we double click on it and you may get a macro enable warning, like a red warning. And there's some instructions. I've just got this yellow one, macros have been disabled, so I'm going to turn those on. Just ask your IT department if you're allowed to do this. Okay. If you do get the red warning, there are some extra instructions about how to turn that on. You've got to unblock it. Again, you know, just be careful about unblocking macros. So here's the toolbar, but how do we turn it into an add-in so it's always here? Well, essentially, just go to the Save As button on the toolbar here, so go Save As, and we just need to save it as, scroll up from the bottom, an Excel add-in. And this should default you to your add-ins. Okay, and then just click Save. All right, and now close down this file or simply go to uh, Developer tab if you've got it on because you want to go to Excel add-ins. If you haven't got the Developer tab, you can always right-click, customize the ribbon and tick the Developer tab, okay? But if you haven't got that, then fine. Just go to File, down to Options, across to Add-ins, Excel Add-ins, Go. Okay, and then Browse, and then you'll find your folder where you just saved things in. Okay, so here's the one that I just downloaded, 1st of August. Okay, and click OK. And then I can close down this file that I had open. Let me just go File New, for example, just to show you. If I start a new file, here it is. The add-in is here. Okay, I can close down that other file. 
Okay, and finally, if you want to get those GPT buttons to work, you need to go to openai.com and sign up. All right, once you've signed up, you can go to your API section, you can go to your details, and you can actually get the API key that you need. Okay, and then you can copy that key because the very first time you click one of those buttons, it'll ask you to put your key in. All right, and there's instructions about how you go and change that key if you need to uh, in the README document that you can download. So once you've got your key and you've put it in, you also need to put in your credit card details, otherwise you'll get a warning when you click the button. Okay, it's pretty cheap. Um, there's pricing in here. You can go to billing info, put usage limits on, so you can get a, an alert when you get spend a dollar, or put a hard limit on $15 or whatever you want to do, okay? So you can limit the risk of your credit card getting blown out. But honestly, thousands of tokens are cents. So, and tokens are words, essentially, give or take. All right, so there we go. Give it a go, try it out. Let us know in the comments what you think. Have you hit issues? Do you find it useful? Hope you use the ribbon. It's, I find it awesome. I've been using it for 10 years. Okay, catch you in the next video.